Hi everyone, it's Rio Cloudsick in today's session. We're going to look at the new and improved capability with unconditional access for re-authentication. So we'll first understand what the re-authentication policy is, how we can leverage it, and how it's of value to you as an IT administrator. So let's get into what it is. Well, the re-authentication policy lets you require users to interactively provide their credentials again upon each and every sign-in, typically before accessing critical applications, within the cloud and taking sensitive actions. With today's public preview, you can now require re-authentication for any resource protected by conditional access. So let's get to it. If you were to access Microsoft Entra via entra.microsoft.com, you would require the applicable roles which is either Global Administrator or Security Administrator. And then on the left-hand service pane, you want to select Identity, and then scroll down to where you see Protection. This will take you to your protection services. You then want to select conditional access. This will present you the conditional access dashboard pane in which will include the policy snapshot, i.e. how many conditional access policies are enabled, any which are in report only, i.e. audit, and any which are disabled. You'll also see the user assignments and the device assignments here as well. So if you were to navigate to policies, this will show you a list of the policies which have been created previously their current state and the creation date. In the, the announcement in, in um, February, Microsoft have added new filters to the conditional access service pane in which we could filter via actor, targets, condition, grant control. Within actor per se, we can see, okay, which conditional access are assigned to all users, um, any uh, particular user accounts, Microsoft 365 security groups, any directory roles. If we were to change this filter to targets, we've got options uh, like applications for app registrations, user actions for registration of security information for maybe self-service password reset, and also authentication context for those protected action types. And we could filter, so we could take off that value and select IE authentication context and any applicable conditional access policies based on authentication context will appear in this list here. As you could see, I've got none. So if I was to remove that filter, you would just see the one policy there. So if we were to carry on with what we was doing and create new policy, and if you're familiar with this, this wizard uh, as is, um, you would understand that, okay, there's an assignment, there's conditions to satisfy, and there's also access controls i.e. Um, require the use of multi-factor authentication, require uh, maybe a hybrid join, maybe a compliant device, um, stuff like that. But if we were to run through it quickly, uh, we'll give the conditional access policy a name. We'll select assignments, then user accounts. We'll then decipher, okay, do we want to assign this conditional access policy to all users or a particular Microsoft 365 security group? We've, of course, we've got exclusions there in which not all conditional access policies will be applicable to all user accounts within our organization. We then move on to the next pane, which is target resources. Are we targeting all cloud apps here? Maybe a particular user action, which could be requiring security, inf uh, sorry, registering user information, global secure access, which is our new security service edge or authentication context for our protected actions. And you've got, you've got some options there. Then we go down to conditions. So what is it which is going to be satisfied within this conditional access policy? It could be user risk or sign and risk. But of course, if you're using that, that capability within conditional access, you require a Microsoft Entra ID Premium P2 license. For anything else, Premium P1. We've also got device platforms, maybe for operating systems, and maybe the likes of Windows, iOS, Android. Locations, if you were to create name locations or a trusted locations, or maybe part of your global secure access deployment, you've got your compliant network location check there. And we've also got the authentication flow preview capability, which I showed in the last video. But in today's video, we're interested in the access controls, particularly the session controls here, in which we've got sign-in frequency. If we were to select sign-in frequency, we can see we've got options for per periodic re-authentication, which we could decipher the, the amount of units, i.e. the time frame for re-authentication, if, if that be hours or days. Uh, but in this video, we're really focusing on every time. So if we were to select every time and select, that will be part and parcel of our conditional access policy. So I think the, the leading question is, 
when would we want to use the signing frequency um, specifically for every time? Well, there's many use case. For, uh, for some, it may be accessing higher risk resources such as connecting to a VPN, maybe activating a privileged role assignment in privileged identity management, or maybe just performing an action within an application such as changing personal information um, in, a, in a HR directory, for example. So there's many different use case scenarios there. Or alternatively, we could tie this up with a authentication context label. So if we were to go back here and select and, and select an authentication context and create a label here, we could tie this label up with a protected action, which I've done in one of my previous videos. So many different use case scenarios there. Um, you can see where probably the value is driven from and, and kind of what the real authentication policy does. Um, if you do have any questions, please do let me know. This is just a quick video on some of the updates within the Microsoft Entra um, newsletter, uh, which which is published every um, every month. Uh, but like I said, any questions or, or assistance needed, please please do let me know. Thank you very much.